Where is Amy? She's at school. Is she here? No, she's with Dominique. In France. I thought you were going to bring her. It wasn't possible. It's the holidays soon. I'll bring her then, I promise. You say these things. Next time, I promise. How old is she now? Seven. And what is she playing? Piano and violin. I was so looking forward to seeing her. Yes. Next time, I promise. I'd like a pot of tea for my mother and myself as soon as possible. That's Mrs. Summers. Yes, thank you. Quite a cheerful morning. She isn't up yet. Doesn't get up until about 11, usually. A little breakfast, quite a good eater. That's something, isn't it? I'll see you later. Yes, I shan't be going far. Say that, I'm sorry. Can't talk very much. Would you like to hear some music? Hmm? Shall I play you some music? Yes. Don't mind the music. You always used to play the gramophone in the mornings. Father never liked it. He liked silence. It's hell, you know. invited afterwards to the reception at the Dorchester for 
for at tisse et tøj. She always made me cry. You brought Amy with you. Next time. Sorry, I was looking for the Reverend Sadler. Yes, yes, come in. Thank you. Would you like to go through? I'm just calling. 
Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. What's your name? Frank Summers. Paul? You have a visitor. Frank Summers. Come in. Hello? Yes? Oh. Yes, yes. Yes, it is. Yes, I think it's on Saturday, isn't it? Four o'clock. Hello. Hello. Bye now. What are you reading? Oh, The Wind in the Willows. Mr. Summers? Yes. Paul Sadler, how do you do? My mother died this morning. I believe you knew her, Peggy Summers. She was resident at Spire View. Yes, of course. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. You're Frank. Yes. She always talked about you, her musical family. You have a daughter, Amy. Yes. That's right. Oh, that is sad. She was such a lovely person. I'd like you to do the funeral for me. Of course. When will it be, do you know? Whenever you like. Do you have a funeral director? Uh, Newman. I know, Mr. Newman. Are you having a cremation or burial? A cremation. Something very simple. Whatever you like. I'll leave it to you. I'll get my diary. We can call him while you're here. This is a lovely house. Yes. Yes, we're very lucky. Now, let me see what's happening. Mr. Summers, I have a message for you. No, it's... It's here somewhere. Ah, there you are, Mr. Summers. Mr. Francis Summers. Yes? We'd like to talk to you in connection with your mother's death this morning. Car's outside. Are you arresting me? I will do if necessary. Is this man with you? Detective Sergeant Gray. Okay. I'll follow. I'm following. Mr. Summers, you asking me to arrest you? Don't touch me! Okay. Let him come as he pleases. First, the sergeant will have to be sure that you're not carrying a firearm or other offensive weapon. Hmm? beginning to wonder if you were going to turn up. Where have you been? I went to see a priest. And before that, I went to the cinema. What was the film? It was French. Very good. You killed your mother. Then you went to the cinema. No. I went to the pub and then I went to the cinema. Is that a music? It's a fact. Hmm. So what other facts can you tell me? You married man? 
Yes, my wife is in France. Is that where you live? No, it's where she lives. So where do you live? No fixed abode. Mm. You must have a home somewhere. I live in hotels. Expensive. That's relative. You paid your mother's bill at the Spy View, didn't you? Yes. It's pricey. About a thousand a month? More than that. It's a lot to find. Some people get into a terrible mess trying to keep up the payments. If the money can't be found, what can you do? Seems like they just refuse to die. And that's something I hadn't thought of. Where do you work? I don't. So how do you live? I have a private income. A family inheritance? No. So what? I earned it. It's been quite a sum with the bills you're paying. How much? Six and a half million. Million what? Pounds. And how did you do that? You might learn something. You're an intelligent, educated man. Why are you behaving like this? The relationship between my mother and myself is private. I won't discuss it with you. Upstairs. What did you do? I gave her a couple of pills. I held her hand till she was asleep. I put a pillow over her face and held it there. I think she was trying to resist me. I think that's what she was doing. How ill was she? Fading away. Not in any great pain, but... Yeah. Okay, look, I uh, can't get you out of here tonight, but we'll be in court in the morning. I've got a guy coming down from London to deal with all that. Now, um, bail. Where are you living? Hotels. No home address? No. Is this how you've been living since Holland Park? Most of the time. Yeah, okay. So, uh, where are you staying now? Riverside Hotel. Yeah. See, they may ask for somewhere more permanent. I want you to stay with me. No, not in London. No, Frank, come on, I've got the room. I don't want to be in London. No! Thank you, but no. So where? I'll stay here. Who with? I'll get an address. That's no good. I need a dress this morning. Who do you know here? Nobody. A clergyman from the cathedral. Oh, great. He's doing the funeral. Oh, clergyman, perfect. What's his name? Paul Sadler, yeah, but I, I'll I don't... contact him. I only met him once. I don't think you can <laughs> ask him to put me up. You need an address for a couple of weeks, and I'll talk to him. Hmm? OK. Thanks. Where have you been? Two years is a long time to go walk about. We worry about you. It wasn't her pain I was trying to kill. Well, it'll only be for the two weeks. Uh, once he sorted out his mother's affairs, he'll be staying with me in London. Yes, of course we will. We don't know him. I have a responsibility. I knew his mother. He killed her. It was an act of mercy. Well, you don't know that. Well, you can be absolutely sure of this. And I've known Frank for 15 years. He's a good man. Uh, you have nothing to fear. Please have no doubt about that at all. He needs our help. But helping him and him living here, they are quite different things. I can't refuse him. 
Well, I can. So can Gemma. We'll have to talk to her, obviously. Well, what are you going to say? This man's killed his mother and he's sleeping in a spare room. Well, of course, you have to be absolutely certain who you're taking in. Yes, I do. And I wouldn't uh, ask you if I couldn't give you that assurance. No, look, you don't understand. It's in the nature of my husband's work that we have a constant flow of visitors. Because of this, it's one of the rules of the house. Well, my rule, but agreed by my husband, that nobody stays longer than a couple of nights, because otherwise we would never have any time to be alone. As it is, I think that, at the very least, we should have the beginning of the day and the end of the evening to ourselves. This man is not a visiting cleric. But we have an agreement, and I would like to stick to it. These are exceptional circumstances. I want him to stay. He is in a tricky situation. We're not certain that he'll be granted bail under any conditions. So if you were to accept him into your home, our case would be viewed very favorably by the magistrates. I don't think that's a very fair way of putting it to us. Lucy, we can't turn him away. You see, this is the problem. We are never allowed to say no. We have a role to play. Precisely. Okay, I'll talk to Gemma. But if she doesn't want him to stay, I'm afraid there is no question of him staying. Thank you. <laughs> Mrs. Summers was a very frail woman, deeply unhappy because of the deterioration of her health, and profoundly depressed by what she felt was the uselessness of her life. Having visited her and worried about her over many months, Mr. Summers was in no doubt that her depression, already profound, could only become more grave as her health inevitably declined. There can be no doubt that Mr. Summers' action was an act of mercy and love. There is no other motive. Mrs. Summers had no money of her own, and her son is an extremely wealthy man, having sold his business two years ago for some several million pounds. For him to remain in custody would be in no one's interest. Arrangements have been made for him to stay with the Reverend Canon Paul Sadler and his wife Lucy at their home in Cathedral Close for the following 14 days. And from thenceforth, at the address of my colleague, Mr. Gerald Miller, in London, and I would ask the court to accept this obviously most satisfactory arrangement. Thank you. This is very kind of you. We're very pleased to help. Of course we are. You must be very tired. Yes. Right, let's go. This way. Come on. Don't even say good morning. Do you mind? Steal your mail, search your rubbish, bribe your neighbours, and do anything to get a headline. You won't believe how low they can get until it happens to you, and I don't forget that. Okay. You get one statement from me now, and that's it. You got what was said in court, so you know the situation. Now, Frank is obviously very distressed. He uh, has had a very traumatic decision to make, and he did what he thought was best with extreme courage and compassion. That's it. What is he going no, to no, do? No, no, and I'm asking you now to back off and show some dignity. Yes, sir. Would you no, say I'm that I'm not they... answering any questions? Yes. You've had your quote, and that's it. Now, Frank is not coming out today, tomorrow, or the next day. These are my instructions to him, and I've told him not to say anything at all to any of you, so don't waste your time. Yes, but how did he feel look, when he... Look, hey, what have I just said? What kind of state hmm? of mind is he in? Well, use your fucking head. Double five, seven, eight, four. 
No, I'm sorry. I'm not prepared to say anything about that. Just put the phone down. No, I'm sorry. I said I'm not prepared to... Don't get into a conversation. You must arrange to have all your calls put through the operator for the next couple of weeks. Do that right away. I think you should have warned us about this. <sighs> yeah, I'm sorry. Well, they'll soon stop if you're firm. Is there anything else that we should know about? Well, these things attract attention. It might yeah. be for me. Hello. No. I'll make some coffee. Frank, come in. Thank you. Did you manage to get some rest? Yes, I did. Thank you. This is Gemma. We met yesterday. Hello, Gemma. Hello. Is the room OK for you? Yes, it's lovely. Good. We're not meat eaters. I hope you don't mind. No, I prefer not to eat it. Have you got everything out of the hotel? Yes. Jerry cleared my room for me this morning. I could do with a solicitor like that. What for? Well, it'd be useful. Paul says that you live in hotels. Yes. You must prefer it. I'm always traveling. Doing what? I study music, indigenous music, collect it and record it. And then what do you do with it? At the moment, I'm just, um, I'm just collating and, and, and collecting. I used to have a recording company, mostly rock, and then we did put out a bit of country blues for my own pleasure. My problem was that the company became so successful, I spent all my time haggling contracts, doing business. I can't abide all that, so I went back on the road. Mm. What sort of places did you go to? Anywhere. Everywhere. I'll do where I please. What? Just in Britain, or...? Any country. Any place. If I hear something interesting about drummers in Timor, I go and find out. Huh. What a wonderful life. Suicide was originally a crime because of the theological concept that God decides when you die and not you. Surely there must be the right to choose the moment of one's death and that must include the administering of death by another. How can an act of love ever be wrong? It wasn't an act of love. I killed her because her life was intolerable to me. I couldn't bear it. 
It's a fierce judgment on yourself. You're angry. That's a perfectly natural part of the grieving process. But so are acceptance and forgiveness. You mustn't feel that you can't be forgiven. I don't have the right to forgive for the dead. Only they can do that. So you're saying that death can never be forgiven? <laughs> I can't accept that. Forgiveness Why is a part of love. Why did you put your mother in a home? She was very weak. I know that, but couldn't nursing in her own home have been afforded? She didn't want to stay there after my father died. You could have taken her in yourself. He doesn't have a home. Yes, I could have done. Why didn't you? I should have done. I'm sorry I didn't. Judith Ward. I'm not talking. I belong to PAH. We're a self-help organization for people looking after their sick and elderly parents in the home. We have a newsletter. No. Oh, Mr. Summers, we would really appreciate a few comments from I you. I said no. Well, perhaps you'd care to write something for us yourself. Just a few moments of your time, please. It would be most helpful to the thousands of our members who are... Oh, shit. I'll need your card, please, sir, if you wouldn't mind. Thank you, sir. Do you have a bag? Yes, I... Uh... We don't seem to... Uh... Anything will do. I'm afraid this is all. Uh... It's fine. Thank you. Sorry. Wrong room. Your mother's. They came to clear her room, and I told them that I had your authority to keep them for you. That's very kind of you. Thank you. I knew you wouldn't want them raked over by every Tom, Dick, and Harriet. No, I wouldn't. Thank you. Your mother and I had quite a few conversations together. Only she and I know what we talk about. No one is to say that we didn't talk about whatever you want us to have talked about. You did the right thing. Better off, dead. And have done with it. What are you doing here? That's my room. You're being refunded? I've paid for it till the end of the month, so it's my room. Your refund is in my office. Where are my mother's belongings? In the basement. You are welcome to take them away as soon as possible. I want you off the premises. Goodbye, Mr. Fellows. Don't forget. No, I won't. Please, let me help. 
Thank you. I'll be sending a van. You can send me the refund. Mr. Newman called me this morning. He said you've cremated your mother without a service. Yes. You should have some kind of a... commemoration. What? A few words and a hymn. I'd rather there was nothing. It doesn't need to be religious. It would be an opportunity for you to express your feelings. That's important. It's a personal matter. Your mother must have been proud of you, being so successful. She never really understood what I did. She knew everything about music, but rock and business was another world to her. So, what did you say to her when you told her that you chucked it all in? I didn't tell her. I see. My marriage broke up at the same time. It would only have worried her. And you don't say things that'll upset them at that stage of their lives, do you? No, of course not. Paul's told me it's possible for your conditions of bail to be changed. Yes. Well, if you don't want to go to London, you're very welcome to stay here with us. That's very kind of you. We'd like you to stay. Yes, we would. I don't think that would be very wise. Why? It's a long time to the trial. <laughs> we both understand that. Anyway, think about it. Is that going to be a problem? No, no, no. Bail isn't a problem. Now that you've been last made contact again, I want to keep hold of you. You should be among your friends where things are familiar. Why? Well, recuperation, comradeship, affection. We want to help you back. In and out of hotels, staying with people you don't know. I prefer the company of strangers. And the unfamiliar. No, you don't. Really, you don't. You need a home. And what do I put in it? Oh, I've got a couple of videos for you. One of Don's bands. Can't get them going in the States. Take a look. Tell him where he's going wrong, would you? I wouldn't, know. I'm out of touch. Come on, you've got a head for the business like no one else. Just take a look. This isn't very subtle. Well, I never have been. You know that. Oh, I'll let you know as soon as I get a meeting with Barrymore. In the meantime, you get me everything relevant to your mother, OK? Take care of yourself. Bye.
Thank you for the flowers. I thought your room was looking a little empty. Can you draw elephants? Well, I'll try. Give me a pencil. It's for a competition. I can win a camera. Isn't this cheesy? No. Mm. It doesn't really matter. Is that Amy? In the photograph in your room? Yes. She's sweet. Yes. How often do you see her? Not very often now. Her mother lives in France. She lives with her mother in France. She's welcome to come here, you know. We'd love her to stay. Thank you. You'd never be delighted, wouldn't you? That's not a real elephant. these fates. <laughs> It'll be the same in a hundred years and a hundred years after that. That's what I like. Come and throw a sponge at Paul. Jan, come and hurl something at Daddy. Coming out of this fate and running into the street, that little boy in a monkey suit is killed by a car. What are you going to say to his mother? That it's a suffering world. But everywhere you look, it's suffering and beautiful in the same breath. But the length of your life isn't important. You're born in the morning. You die in the evening. For all of us, it's the same. But his life, what, five years, is just as vital and meaningful as if he'd lived for 50 or 100. But she wants to see him and be with him tomorrow. And she wants him age six and seven and eight and nine. That's not possible. She'll know that. And I'd have to try to help her to accept it. How? Oh. I would encourage her to pray. To whom? She doesn't believe in God. That doesn't matter. Prayer doesn't need to be to somebody. And what if the child was Gemma? How would you defend your God then? <laughs> it's you. I was afraid this might have gone to somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> Ah. 
If you can't tell that woman that her son is alive in heaven, then you're no good to her. I might suggest that her child on his birth came from God and on his death returned to God, resurrected, that she might consider the word God to be synonymous with heaven. Or if these words are difficult for her, conjuring up the wrong images, I might suggest that you think of God as being the eternal memory of creation, and that her child has always been part of this memory. For me, God is not a person to be blamed or defended. What I would not fail to tell her is that she, no one, is alone in their suffering, which is the meaning of Christ on the cross. Keep it. No, I don't want this. You can't resurrect the dead for me. sorry about this afternoon. It doesn't matter. I did know about Amy. Mr. Miller told me, in confidence. You shouldn't have done that. Does Lucy know? I haven't told her. I don't want you to. Can I ask why? I don't wish to discuss it. You must. Sometime. I don't want to be talked into feeling better. I don't want comforting or to find comfort from anyone or anything. I don't want anyone's pity or sweet words. There's nothing to say. the chosen few. The townspeople are outside the walls and we close the gates on them. Our bodies are protected and our feelings and particularly our buildings. Who cares what happens beyond these walls? Well, look, of course we care, kind of, but we care from within. Are you going to take them? He knows it's true. <clears throat> Each person in the church does what he or she can. She? <laughs> in their given circumstances. But we have a specific role to play here. Some are more suited this side of the wall, some the other side. And we're this side. If you're thinking of moving, swap with me. I'd have no problems living here. <sighs> You'd never know which room to sit in. The only person I'd swap with is Frank.
See you later. Mm. Bye. See you, Frank. Yep. Have a good day. Thanks. I'm going to Lindhurst this morning. I've got to look at a children's camp for the school. I was wondering whether you'd like to come along for the ride. Where? Lindhurst. In the New Forest. Yes. Yes, that would be nice. How do you start a recording label? I found a guy singing in a pub. Borrowed money from everywhere, put him in a recording studio, and the Japanese went crazy about him. That must take some nerve. I've never taken any risks. Never once. I have a home, a husband, a child. I teach children. I bake cakes. I organize restoration funds. And at night, I dream of destruction. I've never done anything just for myself please myself. Ever. Tell me something. That, uh... That letter you hid in your pocket this morning. been wondering about that. Oh, it was, um, it's from an old college friend. We had a, we had a friendship for a couple of years and then he met an American girl and went over there to live with her. He sends me two letters, one for Paul to read, if he so wishes. And the other one is just for me. And then I do the same. It's pure fantasy. And it's pathetic. Who was that? Oh, his name is Thomas. He bought me a cake. What does he do? Just looks after his mother. It's the cripples who come to the church. The healthy get on with their lives. You're putting me on that list. What are you looking at? These cakes. I've been doing this all my life. I was born into a country vicarage and then I married into the church. <laughs> you want me to sweep all these onto the floor, don't you? Is that what you want to do? Yes. So do it. 
Want me to do it for you? Yes. Sure. This is a bit pathetic, isn't it? You should be pleased. <laughs> Why on earth should I be pleased? Put it in the bin. You can still use them. It's been on the floor. Gemma, put it back on the table, please. Put the icing on, who's going to notice? Why did you do it? I'm sorry it was me who did it. I'm surprised. It was stupid, I'm we'll sorry. some more. Why don't you take them out for the birds? We have quite a few visitors passing through. Lucy always marvels at their ability to survive in the world. Like a provincial Victorian lady in awe of the explorer's tale. It's only because you haven't travelled yourself. I've travelled as much as you. Not in the way Frank's talking. Your experience of life is entirely provincial. Well, so what if it is? That's why you compensate for it. By doing what? You know what I'm talking about. There is nothing second class about being provincial. I'm not saying there is. Yes, you are. You'd rather save a homeless drug addict from high-rise London than a provincial town boy. They mostly are provincial town boys. People, mainly women in domestic situations, get trapped into roles and then they are criticised for playing the roles they get trapped in. Yes, but we also trap ourselves. Sometimes it's self-inflicted. You can't keep complaining about being trapped in a cage after someone's offered to open the door. What the hell are you doing here? Brahms Lullaby. Where's the information I asked for? I've had nothing from you. Believe me, you're not going to get off this unless you give me something. I went to the home this morning. I talked to a man called Dennis Fellows. He said he gave you some letters you wrote to your mother. Where are they? There's nothing in them. I want to see them. I'm not having those letters read out in court for the whole world to see. Anyway, there's nothing in them. So why did the old man tell me there was? He never saw them. He told me she wanted you to end her life. She asked you to do it. He says he'll come to court and testify. He wants to be dead himself. He's making it up. But Frank is no good. Look, the prosecution has got 12 signed statements. All staff at the home. All in daily contact with your mother. All saying that she was not depressed. That she never had any intention of ending her life. That she enjoyed many things about her life. Well, they would say that. They've got a vested interest. Of course! But there it is. It's sworn evidence against us. My mother would never have told them anything personal. Not according to them. She was a very private person. Well, if you don't want a defence, we can stop right now. What the hell? OK. What the hell? Oi! What do you want? Do you want help? Fuck off. She said no.
When is it? Next Tuesday to Friday. Where? York. A course on what? It's called the church in the city. Oh, God, another bloody waste of time. No, I don't want to spend four days with a hundred clergymen worrying about their role in society. But what's it got to do with you? We're not surrounded by tower blocks here. I've been offered an interview. Oh. Is to join a team in South London. I'd have specific duties to young people. Like what? Whatever the problems. But there are plenty of young people with problems here. Disaffected, bored, antisocial. You don't even look at them. I have other duties here. It's the sort of pastoral work I should be doing. I'm not swapping this for London, and neither is Gemma. We can't stay here all our lives. I don't like London. What, what do you like? I've compromised for ten years. I now. don't call this a compromise. No, because it's been my compromise. If you take that job in London, I don't want to go with you. I don't think you'll ever go anywhere. Paul, please don't go for the interview. I am going. I've been invited. And I've accepted. So you think it's quite all right to leave me on my own here with Frank? I trust him. You trust me? Oh. Now what are you trying to put into my head? Yes, I do. Well, that's all right then. Is he coming? Yes, he is. Goodness. Bye, darling. See you Friday. My case, my case. Oh, God. Bye. Tell me when you get to the Yes, hotel. I will. All right. Bye, darling. Bye, Dad. A letter from France. My wife is pregnant. She's met a lovely man in Paris. He's moved in with her and their baby is due in November. This is Amy's mother. The nightmare is over, and I'm beginning to feel happy again. She can't do that. She can't replace her. The world can't just go on. We're not allowed to forget. We have to remember. Oh, I, I have to remember. I was advised to see a psychiatrist to cure me, but it isn't depression. It's a commitment not to forget. Not something that has to be ripped out of me. Jerry's the same. He gives me videos to analyze. He thinks I should apply my mind to selling rock videos to the States instead. What's he thinking of? She won't be abandoned. Amy. Oh, I'm sorry. She wanted us to have another child. That was her solution. To substitute her. I'm not going to desert her.
from him. Tell me about Amy. There's nothing I want to say. Does Paul know? Jerry told him, which he shouldn't have done. Oh, I see. Was Paul trying to help you? I don't want help. If I want you to hold me, it's because it's what I want. I'll say goodnight. Um, I'm taking Gemma to the seaside tomorrow for a couple of days. We're booked into a hotel, but I could book another room for you if you'd like to come with us. Yes, I would. Oh, good. Right, well, I'll see you tomorrow then. Good night then. You must be wondering if I've set all this up. Feeling too uneasy to commit adultery in my own home, I, which I have never done, by the way, or anything like it. I go and arrange a night away in an anonymous room. That isn't the arrangement. Not really. But I would like you to sleep in here tonight. Just one night. Just to be together. One night. I don't see why it should be wrong to do that. Okay. <laughs>
I want to lock the door. This is the first time I've been in bed with anyone since she died. In the beginning, for the first months of her life, I was frightened of becoming too attached to her. Of love, that wonderful, being given to me and then taken away. So I tried to separate myself from her, to put the lie in my mind that she wasn't so important to me. But it didn't work. I never felt so devoted. It was an adoration. And it was almost as if I knew it would only last five summers long. Let's stay another night. Just one more night. The eternal memory of creation. Mm. Is that possible? Is it? Off the alcohol. Come on, Daddy. Close your eyes. Oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, I hope I didn't hit anything. You can open them now. Hey, look at this. She did it all herself, didn't you, Jeremy? Oh, it's beautiful. Thank you. Hello, Frank. Hi. Good trip. Yes, thanks. So, 
Where did you get all the shells? From the beach. We spent a couple of days by the sea. That was fun. And we stayed in the hotel. Thanks, that's just what I need. The rooms were brilliant. Which hotel was that? The Abbey, near Lyme. Oh. So you've been exploring the beaches, have you? Me and Frank, but not Mummy. I see. If you open my case, you'll find a little surprise. Oh, thanks. So, how did it go then? I've been offered the job. We've got a month to decide. I have to say, I was very impressed with the other members of the team. They suggested we go up there together for you to meet them, for us to have a look at the house. You'll like them. They're all our age. Two women, one man. Still, we can talk about that later. Yeah. Don't forget to smile when you're dancing. No. You? They never smile. Where are you going? We're putting on a little show at an old folks' home. Spy of you. Right. There. That looks great. I'm ready. Right, let's go. Bye. See you about six. Yeah. Have a lovely time. Bye. Bye, darling. I don't know what to do. I don't think he'd ask you to go anywhere he thought would make you unhappy. Would he? No. But I still don't know what to do. It's going to be one more time. What if we can't stop? Stay here a minute, Gemma. Oh. We've had to cancel it. I'm sorry. What's happened? Two of the residents have been taken ill. Oh. Uh, Would you like to go swimming? Yes, please. We'll go home and pick up our things. Then I shall just have to pop into the hospital. Oh, 
Have you got yourself a towel? I'll get one. Brian? This has got to stop. Absolutely got to stop. Right now. I can't stay here. Playing about here. Stupid letters and dreaming. I should just go to London. I mean, I should just do it. break out of all this. Absolutely have to stop all this. I don't... I don't know what I'm doing. Who do I think I am? Sorry. Sorry. Ho, 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 ho.
You've been here a long time. Yes. Would you prefer to stay on your own? No. Seeing her born was the miracle of life. A gift from heaven. I'd never seen anything so wonderful. Five years later, I was watching her die after one and a half years of pain. And that can't be forgiven. No, I don't have the right to forgive. Who are you angry with? I'm angry because it happened. You're angry for her sake. You can't forgive for her sake. What if you stopped being angry? I can't. No, it's not easy. What if I tell you to have love for her sake? I don't think that's possible. No. You know it's possible. Isn't that what she would want? If you have forgiveness, that much love, you will feel her beside you and within you. She is within you now, never forgotten. It's too lonely. No, no one ever suffers alone. It matters not what the circumstances. Uh, killing another person cannot and will not be tolerated in our society, nor in any civilized society. And furthermore, we have no law, uh, rightly, which allows a person to kill another on the grounds of mercy. Once it is presumed that in certain circumstances the killing of another is justified, well then, that is the first step down an immoral path that is at present uh, firmly out of bounds and should remain so. Consequently, you should be and you will be punished. I sentence you to two years imprisonment. However, however, in sentencing, I have to consider the particular circumstances of the person standing guilty before me. In the past two and a half years, you have had to bear the tragedy of the death of a child. There can be no greater suffering. In the light of this and your mother's particular circumstances, which I have already considered, the sentence is suspended. Have you got our new address? Mm -hmm. I think it'll be all right. Now we're actually going. Feels right. This room looks horribly empty. Can I take this down? Oh, yes, thanks. None of our furniture is going to fit into this new house. You do know that. Let's stay here then. Please. That's all right. I'll take it. 
This is for you. It's huge. And it's for looking after me all this time. Can I open it now? Yes, you can. care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Promise to write? Yes, of course. Look! <gasps> That's beautiful. That's magnificent. Thank you for everything. Things are changing for you. Even though I can't take the credit. <laughs> 